So I've covered a lot of the basics of Vision OS development in some of the videos that I've made. And I want to continue to go over the documentation and basic functions. But I also have been thinking about where I want to take this channel and what direction I want to go in. And how am I going to go deeper into Vision OS and differentiate myself from the other Vision OS channels? And how am I going to go deeper into the complexities of this language and make actual interesting projects? And I thought back to a book I read a couple years ago called Creative Selection by Ken Kosienda. And Ken Kosienda was an early Apple developer who was a principal engineer of the iPhone for over 15 years and is credited with the invention of autocorrect. So the way autocorrect was created was uh, by thinking deeply about the problem of using a multi-touch keyboard and it was pretty crucial to the iPhone success. We can't imagine an iPhone now with a, a Blackberry keyboard. Our thumbs are too big to really type on those tiny buttons and the iPhone keyboard was the essential reason why we have so much screen space on the iPhone and that allowed for a whole new experiences on the iPhone, movies and games and a better web browsing experience experience. So it's safe to say that the keyboard, multi-touch, and autocorrect, which was essential to the keyboard, was one of the biggest reasons for the iPhone's success. And I was inspired by that book many years ago, and I kind of want to reread it, but what was really interesting to me about that book is the concept of interface design. And I know in AR, there's going to be a big demand for AR interface design. There's gonna be a need for people to think creatively about how to interact with a 3D space. And it's gonna be different than the web because the web browser is a 2D document that's usually just placed right in front of you. And there's a lot more opportunity to think in 3D space and think about 3D interfaces and how we're gonna use different gestures to interact with 3D interfaces. And that's why Apple has a lot of cool gestures, the pinches, moving, eye tracking. You can think about gestures in an interesting way and you can think about creating interfaces that you wouldn't see in normal life, you know, like Minority Report. That's the reference that's always made. So in order to do that, I've got a project for you and I can't say exactly why I'm doing this project, but I knew that I had to figure this out in order to create an interface and I had to figure out more things to do with gestures. That's kind of what I want to go into today. I want to go into some interesting things I figured out about gestures. And basically, I just want to rotate a cube with just drag gestures. And that might be counterintuitive because there is a 3D rotate gesture, but I'll go into the issues I had with that. So let's start. So we're going to go down a rabbit hole here and it's going to lead us to talk about gestures, drag gesture, gesture rotate 3D, and quaternions. So just bear with me, um, there's a lot to cover. This is basically the gesture function that I want. I want to be able to rotate this cube in an X direction and a Y direction. Now it's a little bit, it's not perfect yet, but this is a function that I wanted as I start to think about interface design. Now I'll have to probably think about tolerance here because as I rotate in X direction, sometimes it picks up the Y, sometimes it picks up the X. So I'll have to think about that in a future video. But in my search, the first thing that I found, um, and I'm giving credit where credit due, is this website, VR Hermit, Code and Writing by Joseph Simpson. And here are a couple labs about how to use uh, gestures. So you've got drag gesture, rotate gesture 3D, magnify gesture, and combining those gestures, simultaneous gestures. So I will post that in the link below so you can check it out. And there's a YouTube also. So initially what I thought I needed was a rotate gesture. And luckily there's one here. I just copied it from Joseph Simpson. And I wanted to experiment with rotate gesture. And I ran into a problem. So let me just add a cube where we will add a rotate gesture to. Okay, so I have a cube and I've attached the rotate gesture. Now let's see what happens.
Oh, why isn't my cube rotating? Okay, so this is the first problem I ran into. So with Rotate Gesture 3D, I found out that it is not a one pinch gesture. It's actually a two pinch gesture. And to, to do a two pinch gesture in the simulator, you hold down the option key and it gives you these, you see two pinches right here. And that's how you rotate. This wasn't what I wanted because when I create my interface, I actually want to rotate this cube with one pinch. In order to do that, I realized I'm gonna have to use a drag gesture. Now here's the problem. If you look at a drag gesture example and you can find a lot of them, we are modifying the entity's position. But I am gonna use a drag gesture to modify rotation, which means I need to change the values rotation, which is, is uh, here, value.entity.transform.rotation. Now, if we go into the documentation, we'll, f we'll find that a rotation has a certain format. It's a quaternion, and that is a pretty confusing concept. Going deep into quaternions, it's a highly mathematical concept, and it's pretty difficult to understand. And I had to research it on YouTube University. What is a quaternion? And I found this resource. Three blue, one brown. Now this is a really good video, and I'm gonna link it below. This video will go over quaternions in a much more in-depth way than I can. I don't wanna scare you off from quaternions. There's actually some simple concepts in quaternions. I mean, there's complex concepts in quaternions, but there's some simple ways that I found to understand this. And this video links to an interactive way to understand quaternions. And this link right here really made me understand quaternions in a better way. So quaternion is four values, okay? The first value, that's the scalar quantity. And then there's three imaginary quantities. That's I, J, and K. We're not gonna get too deep into the, the weeds here. And so a quaternion is what we need to rotate an object. And if you mess with this interactive quaternion sphere, you can see what we need to do to manipulate a rotation. And because I'm not gonna get too complicated about this, I realize that all I wanna do is have one rotation on the x-axis and one rotation on the y-axis. And luckily, that's a pretty simple problem. So you can see, if I manipulate the fourth value, I am rotating on the y-axis, at least in this graphic here. That's all I need to know is the fourth value is where the manipulation is applied to rotate on this y-axis. And then if I move the third value, it is rotating the, on the x-axis. And if I move the first value, I am doing rotation on the z-axis. That's all you need to know. So I'm, I'm rotating the red dot now, but you can see I'm just moving this green dot now. You see how it's moving the blue dot now. And this is just gonna take some experimentation. Now quaternions are a four value number system. So one thing you'll notice is as you change one of the numbers, some other numbers are forced to change. And that is because the sum of the square of these four numbers equals one. Now I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but I'm gonna post the link to this below and you can check it out. Okay, quaternions can be described in several different ways, and take a look at these. You can use four scalar values in the same way that this visualization has four scalar values, or you can use an angle and a three element vector, which is what I ended up doing because I understand angles. I wanted to rotate this cube by an angle. It's easy to reason about an angle and the angle is represented in radians. So just do a quick Google, how many radians is 90 degrees? It's 1.57 radians. So let's just say, do a quick experiment here. Let's say 1.57 right here. And this second value is the axes 
we want to rotate on. That's pretty simple to understand, so let's test it out. And remember, these numbers are between negative 1 and 1. Oh, of course it won't show because the cube is actually rotating 90 degrees, so you can't really see any movement even if I interact with it. Let's make it a little bit less than 90 degrees. Let's make it 1.3. Ah, see? So here we rotated the cube with this drag gesture. I transformed the rotation and it made the cube rotate a little less than 90 degrees. What happens if I do negative one here? Will it rotate in the opposite direction? Yeah, exactly. It rotated in the opposite direction. So you can kind of just mess around with these values and you can understand how this is working. And now the next thing is, we want to rotate this cube by the amount that the mouse is going in the X direction. So I want to be able to drag this cube and rotate it like this, you know? And there is a property for that. That is Translation 3D. Let me just demonstrate Translation 3D. Um, that is the mount that your pinch is going to move as you click and drag across the screen. Value dot trend. Let's print it. Okay, I am moving this cube, and even though it's not showing the cube as moving, I am moving my mouse. I'm clicking and dragging, and let's look in the print. You can see that I have X, Y, and Z values. And really all we need is the X, because as I want to drag between left and right, I want to move. But this shows how if you move up to the top, I only move the X position by 10, 17, 25, 34, 42, 45. Let's try it with just the X so you can see it a lot better. I put value.translation.x. As I move left to right, see what happens. The number is getting bigger. So we know we're capturing our X position value. All we need to do is put that X position value into this quaternion and it is giving us an error because we need to be in a float value because we need radians. But look, this number is way bigger than a radian, so I can tell that, that it's gonna be extremely fast rotation. Because remember, 1.57 is 90 degrees. Look, it's rotating extremely fast. But we got a rotation, so that's really good. Really, we just wanna put an arbitrary number here that kind of just slows down the cube's rotation. Now, as I'm tracking this X position, and I dragged it, I dragged it to about here, right here, I can see that it's about 200. A couple hundred is a good value, because I can see that when I moved the mouse into a reasonable position, a couple hundred was the number that I displayed here. And so I'm just gonna mess with this number. There's no exact science to it. It's just really about feeling. I put 120 here, and let's see if we can slow down this cube's rotation as I click and drag it. And there it is. It is actually, as I click and drag, it's creating a decently slow rotation. And the bigger I make this number, the slower I can make the rotation. Actually, scratch that, the, sl the smaller I make this number, the slower I can make the rotation. Like if I were to make it two. Yeah, it's a hard rotation there. So, now why is it the second value that I'm at one? Well, think about the Y axis going up and down. Think about it like a pole. We are rotating fully around the Y axis. And that means that the Y has to be one. Now all these numbers are between zero and one. If we mess around with this and we make it an X, we're gonna be rotating this way on this axis. I'll demonstrate that. Now, of course, I still have translation.x. So as I move right and left, I'll move the cube up and down. Now, if I wanted to change that, I would just change this to Y if I wanted to move up and down while I moved up and down. And then the same thing with the Z axes. Let's experiment and see what happens when we do thin by the Z axes. Oh, it's spinning on the Z axis. So it's like a pole that is going toward the user and into the back of the room. Now what happens when we make 
these numbers. Let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Let's see what happens. It is just like zooming in and out of our dimension, basically. So this is the uh, what quaternions do. And I am just going to have to really figure it out quaternions. And to do that, you have to really start to learn to visualize them. And I'm not there yet, but this video is going to help. It's really going to help us. And luckily, oh, I didn't want to know more about quaternions just yet. I just wanted to rotate on one axis and one axis alone. And that is all I needed for this experiment. And hopefully in the future, I will learn more about quaternions. And that's my video for today. Uh, so thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. We're getting deeper into Vision OS, which is exciting. And we're getting actually into the math of 3D space. And that is what you're going to have to need to know in order to create more complex Vision OS apps. So thanks for watching and like and subscribe.